Today, the rental market is broken. Hello again, it's Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics, from latest posts covering finance and property news. Well, in my latest surveys, we show that cash flow stress among renting households has risen to an all-time high of 73.47%. That's more than 2.27 million households. Mapping the market data from CoreLogic shows the high proportion of areas where house rents have risen by more than 20% over the past year across Sydney and Melbourne. Although some areas, especially to the east of Melbourne, did not necessarily follow suit. House rents in Brisbane showed more diversity, though central Brisbane saw considerable hikes. Adelaide and Perth also had many hotspots across house rentals, with some areas to the east of both CBDs reporting slower growth rates over the past year. That said, Canberra and Hobart bucked the trend with little or no growth. Of course, there are some rent controls in the ACT, which helps to moderate rent growth there. Turning to units, CoreLogic shows strong growth in Sydney, with some variations, while in Melbourne, many suburbs were reporting growth above 20%, although again, there were some exceptions. Brisbane was hot, close to the CBD, but weaker further out, whereas Perth showed stronger growth closer to the city centre. Now, all this means that for many renters, the ability to house themselves has become even more expensive. And this, of course, flows through into the inflation data with all rents, not just new rents, running close to 10% annualised, according to the ABS. It's a real mess and leading to real social consequences. But then again, there are some winners. As according to data from SQM Research, residential landlords in some inner city and middle ring suburbs pocketed up to $56,000 extra rental income in the past 12 months as those rents hit record highs across the major capital cities. Rents have been rising fast in many areas, but not uniformly. Over the past 30 days to February the 12th, rents climbed by 2.4% across Melbourne. They rose by more than 1% in Sydney, Brisbane, Canberra and Perth, and by 0.9% in Adelaide. Nationwide, rents increased by 0.7%, lifting the annual rental increase to 9.6%. But of course, there are considerable variations that I've been highlighting. While Clues, for example, in Sydney's eastern suburbs, posted the largest rental increase for a house at $1,075 per week. That's an extra $55,900 windfall for landlords over the year. That equates to a 39.3% year-to-year gain pushing the median weekly rental to about $3,810. Actually, in the past three years, house rents in Val Clues jumped by 38.7% on an analysed basis. Property investors in other Sydney suburbs like Ultimo, Summer Hill and Collaroy also racked up strong rental gains after rents jumped by more than $400 each week, delivering more than $21,000 additional rental income. Over the past 12 months, rents in Ultimo climbed by 47.5%. Summer Hill jumped 54.8% and Collaroy increased by 36.1%. And Summer Hill climbed by 13.3% and Ultimo by 27.1% over the last three years on an annual basis. Outside of Sydney, house rents surged by more than $363 a week across Tenerife and in Brisbane. They were up by $327 in Atterdale, south of Perth, and lifted by $323 in Hawthorne East in Inner Melbourne. Those gains amounted to annual rent increases of 36.4%, 46.1% and 44.2% respectively, and rewarded landlords in those suburbs with more than $16,000 additional rental income over the year. In the unit markets, La Perouse in Sydney's eastern suburbs, Mossman Park in Inner Perth, and Carlton in Inner Melbourne racked up the largest annual rental increases of up to $284 a week, yielding investors with an extra $14,000 a year. In the past 12 months, rents have surged by 40.1%, 52.1% and 54% respectively. Carlton unit rents were lifted by 19.7% each year over the past three years, 
Carlton unit rents lifted by 19.7% each year over the past three years. Mossman Park gained 24.7% and La Perouse by 30.9% on an annualized basis. Now, Tim Lawless, CoreLogic Research Director, said that rents are still expected to rise above average rates as the imbalance between supply and demand persisted, but worsening affordability would cap further growth. The reality is we're not really seeing any underlying changes in the demand and supply imbalance, and we're still seeing rents rising nearly 10% per annum, he said. But I just can't see how renters can continue to withstand that from an affordability perspective. We need to remember that renters don't have a great deal of elasticity in how much they can pay because they can't access credit to pay more rent. And Louis Christopher, SQM Research Managing Director, said rents would likely keep rising strongly across the country this year as vacancies fall further. We're seeing renewed tightness in the rental market across the board after easing slightly in December last year, driven by students who are starting their new semesters and new graduates entering the workforce. He said vacancies were already low to start with due to the ongoing rental shortage. So this renewed increase in demand can only push rents higher at a rapid pace, certainly over the first half of the year. SQM says that vacancy rates fell to 1.1% nationwide last month, down from 1.3% in December. Sydney and Melbourne dropped by 0.5 percentage points to 1.3 and 1.1% respectively, while Brisbane fell to 1% from 1.1%. And vacancies also shrank in Adelaide and Perth, where they fell to 0.4 and 0.5 percentage points respectively. The sharp drop in vacancies lifted rents to new peaks, across Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, Perth and Adelaide. Now, a critical factor here is also that some landlords sitting on strong capital gains are looking to crystallise their paper profits, so have listed their rental property for sale, a trend we see most strongly in Melbourne, but it is spreading elsewhere. And in addition, higher rents are not enough to cover the increased mortgage costs, even after negative gearing. So the supply of rental property is on the decline at a time when migration continues to run hot. So you can conclude that the rental market is indeed broken. But the question is, do those in political circles really want to tackle this critical issue? Well, lip service apart, I suspect not. And so to that extent, Australia is broken too. Now, if you're buying your home in Sydney's contentious market, you don't need to stand alone. This is the time you need to have Edwin Almeida from Ribbon Property Consultants standing alongside you. Buying a property is both challenging and adversarial. The vendor has a professional on their side. Emotions run high, price discovery and price transparency are hard to find, and then there's the wasted time and financial investments that you make. Edwin understands your needs, so why not engage a licensed professional to stand alongside you? With RPC, you know you have experience, knowledge and master negotiators looking after your best interests. So shoot Ribbon an email at info at ribbonproperty.com.au and if you use the promo code DFAWTW slash Martin, you can get a 10% discount offer. I'm Martin North from Digital Finance Analytics. Many thanks for watching and I'll see you again next time.